for what the Lord will teach us uh, through his holy and divine word. Uh, we have completed uh, the entire book of Acts, uh, completed the entire book of Ephesians. Uh, we are about to complete this book of Romans. Uh, we will be going, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, in to the next successive study dealing with the book of Malachi. Uh, uh, when next opportunity, I have to uh, teach the Bible studies. But uh, we're going to go into the 14th chapter of the book of Romans. <clears throat> and this will be our, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, text for study tonight. And we encourage you to participate uh, with questions with comments uh, to encourage us to do that uh, which the Lord God Almighty has empowered us to do and so now if you have Romans uh, chapter number 14 uh, we're going to uh, deal with the subject that uh, concerning having faith uh, having love for uh, one another uh, enjoying the fellowship of the saints of Almighty God. It is quite a thing to participate in and I hope and pray that we value it, each of us. But the theme of this thought that we want to pull out uh, from this particular study tonight, uh, usually I use this particular text when we're talking a lot uh, about the uh, holiday season. You have a lot of people that uh, I have a real difficult time in loving each other around the holiday season because of the different uh, desires one may have uh, concerning uh, what they will and uh, will not do. Uh, but we want to make this particular uh, theme for this evening uh, to be taken from whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin and so let's get started Romans 14 1 him that is weak in the faith receive ye but not to doubtful disputations we want to start with this particular verse first and uh, the reason being is because from this verse sometimes you step into this chapter on the wrong note. Uh, some people interpret this to say uh, the person's faith is weak. That isn't what it says. And that's why Jesus forewarned us uh, to be careful how we hear. Uh, him that is weak in the faith. He's in the faith but he's weak. And then it's going to explain why he's weak and what area he's weak in. It isn't that he's not a believer. And that's why the Bible says receive you but not to die for disputations. Verse 2. For one believe it that he may eat all things. Another who is weak eateth herbs. So you have two pictures drawn here. Uh, one individual believes he can eat anything on the planet. Crickets. Uh, if he wants to eat a piece of camel meat, shrimp, whatever it is he wants to eat a rat. He can eat whatever he wants to eat. And another believes he only should eat uh, a vegetation type of a diet. Now remember this is dealing with Christians and Christians only. That's who the letter is written to. It is written to Christians and this particular topic here that he's dealing with deals with by saying in the faith Christians. Verse 3. Let not him that eat it despise him that eateth not. So keeping it in a proper flow the one who believes he can eat anything let him not despise the one who says, well, I only should eat herbs. He says, and let not him which eat it not, which would be the second person who only eats herbs, judge him that eat it. So he can't judge it. So the Lord has put a wall between them to keep peace from destroying ourselves. He says, uh, uh, for God 
had received them. So the individual that believes there's nothing wrong with, uh, I'm going to eat pork. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, I don't see anything with another of said we shouldn't eat the hog. The hog was always spoken of bad. I'm just going to eat nothing but vegetables. Matter of fact, I'm not eating any meat because when man first was created, he did not eat any meat according to uh, the lessons we see in the Old Testament until Noah got off the boat, which would be an accurate thought to look at. Uh, and so the Lord tells me, God's bold, you can eat anything. So, But that does not say that has anything to do with us today. Some people have that theory. God was trying to keep people healthy. There's no text where the Lord says, I had them to eat certain things to keep them healthy. That's not in the scriptures. And people should not teach those dietary laws. Uh, for instance, when Noah was told to gather animals together. He was told that there were animals already before the law of Moses that were clean and were unclean. Now let's look at that. Let's go over, if you will. Uh, he, sa he says clearly uh, the, the, those animals that are clean animals. Those animals, uh, let's go to Genesis chapter 6, if you will. And uh, he's talking about the different animals that should be allowed uh, Two animals coming on uh, at a time, then certain sets of animals, uh, male and female, uh, obviously for reproduction. Look at Genesis 7, forgive me. We're going to look at verse 7. And Noah went in, and his sons and his wife, and his son's wives with him into the ark. Because of the waters of the flood. Uh, once again, Genesis 7, 7. Of clean beasts and of beasts that are not clean. There we go right there. So we understand that there was obviously, we'll go back now to Romans 14, there was obviously some animals who the Lord had told them were clean or unclean. And you know, this is the part that man doesn't understand. What is written prior to Moses is all that we need for God to get his point across. There were things said. There is a law. You look up O-N like Nancy, A-N like Nancy. O-N is supposed to raise C to his brother who has died. He gets the pleasure of engaging with his brother's wife. He's going to take her in and raise seed unto his brother's name. He doesn't want to do that, but he accepts the pleasures that God has allowed him to engage in the relationship with the woman. And then he spills his seed on the ground and God kills him. There is nothing that says that they were informed of that law prior to us reading that. So there are many laws that God discussed with the children of men that are not written prior to Moses' law. And I don't think we understand that as a people on the earth. And a lot of us don't understand that in the church. The Lord is not obligated to tell us everything. He tells us what we need to know. But it is clear that Onan knows that already. Why? Obviously he spills a seed on the ground. He don't want to raise seed to his brother. And obviously God kills him for doing it because God does not kill an individual who does not know what is right and what is wrong. How do we know that? James says it very clearly. To him that knows to do good and do it not, and to paraphrase, to him it is a sin. This is an individual. So God is not unrighteous to forget uh, his own law. So well, he will just kill a man and take his life. Because the individual uh, doesn't know what he's doing. And we're going to have to understand saints. We're going to have to buckle down on the planet God made. And know what we're talking about. And when we err, fix it quickly. And keep moving forward. And continue to teach to move forward to help the souls of men develop. We can't walk around going, duh, I wonder what I should say. We have to know. APT, apt to teach. The ability is given by God. The revelation is given through the meanings of the word. As you read Ephesians 3, there is nothing on the earth, brethren, that you and I are going to get in no prayer from the Lord. And if you think that, may God have mercy on our wretched souls. You are going to read your answer, but you may not get the revelation if your heart is evil. 2 Timothy 3. 
ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of truth. So don't think you can just pick up the Bible and say, I'm going to study, study, study. No, no, no. I'm going to study, 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 and I'm going to do, do, do what he said. Guaranteed to get the answer every time. Every time. And so we understand that. And I say, well, I study, and I get the answer. Well, that's between you and the Lord to discuss that. So I'm not finna judge that, but I'm telling you, there's something wrong with that. Because the Lord has no desire to hide information. He said in the Old Testament, in secret, I have said nothing. And in the New Testament, Jesus, his son, said, in secret, I've said nothing. So we're supposed to read, accept, believe. That's it. Accept and believe. That's what causes us to be able to do. So now we're back to Romans 14. Understanding that there are no dietary laws. There was always considered animals clean and unclean. And in the New Testament, according to Acts chapter 10, anything can be eaten, rise, kill me. You want to eat a bowl of flies, eat them up. That's your business. What happens on illnesses or things like that? Well, we don't know. But you, it's not going to be anything to do with your spiritual walk. And so, this particular mentality of battling with each other over food and days is not acceptable in the church of Christ. And let's look at and see why not. He says in Romans 14 uh, and in verse uh, number 3, he says, Why can the judgments not be made? For God had received it. So, so it's like this. If you're in a family and you adopt a child and the rest of the siblings have a problem, there are going to be some sore bottoms in that family if that family is right. They're going to say, look, this child is ours. He's your brother, he's your sister, I don't care what he looks like. And you will accept him. Or we're going to review if you should be allowed in the family. A good father that leads well or a good mother that leads well or whether she's single uh, and the child is, uh, the husband has passed, or uh, some kind of way he's left her with the children, and one of them is adopted. Well, no, listen, I say who can be in this family, and I say who cannot. And that's God's teaching. There are a lot of saints that are going to die in hell because they refuse to let go of the Jonah mentality. And that is to judge who they would like to be in the kingdom of God. And they can't do that. And so, Romans 14, 4. Who art thou that judges another man's servant? That's the key. That's what's wrong with it. It's God's servant. It's not yours. It's not mine. To his own master, he standeth the father. So, when his master is displeased, his master will knock him back. If his master is pleased, his master will lift him up and stand him up. Verse, I mean, still verse 4. Yea, he shall be holding up. See, so God gives a promise. The one who thinks he can eat anything, you don't like it, he shall be held up. Because of his spirituality. The one that thinks he can only eat vegetables, he shall be held up. Because of his spirituality. Now we understand the concept. He's not weak in his belief. He is weak on thinking he may do something wrong to his relationship with God. His conscience, if he eats, but he is a believer. He believes in faith, repentance, confession, and baptism. He believes that there is only one church. He believes, understand that we have to love each other. He believes that different nations shall flow into the one church, so nobody should be mad because somebody is a different color sitting next to them. And, and I'm going to tell you this, saints. I'm going to share this with you. Anyone that you knew on this earth that had a problem with a person's color. In worship to God is in hell. Take it to the bank. Because you telling me you didn't like them down here because they were a certain color. But in heaven we're going to be tight because we don't have no skin. That's foolishness. You're still going to know who they are. See, that's foolishness. You cannot be prejudiced. Amen. We don't know any man after the flesh. That statement said about Christ. We know him no longer after the flesh according to the flesh. And in all men, we know them not after the flesh, but the spirit. What is your spiritual rock? You can have two people of the same race. One believes that there's one church. The other believe any church would do. They should have trouble with each other. You have one of a different race. They both believe that there's only one church. They should love each other. So that's, that, that's no place in heaven for that type of nonsense. Verse 5. One man esteemeth one day above another. He thinks this day is higher. He thinks that he should do something extremely special for God that day. And it's not the first day of the week. Because we know we have to come and worship God on the first day of the week. He says, another esteemeth every day alike. That every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So if this person isn't fully persuaded in his own mind. And he believes that he wants to gather all his family together on Christmas Day. He, 
He wants to have them all that. He wants to lead a prayer to God. He's not going to say it's Christ's birthday. But he understands, I want the family there. Come on, Timmy. Auntie going to be here. Come on. We want you to come on in too. Everybody's going to be here. I'm going to lead the prayer. And then we want to eat. We're going to thank God for his son Jesus and all the blessings he gives. He can do it. But the other person may say, well, I don't want to do that with my family. Because, you know, that's just nothing. He can do that. But nobody should be pointing a finger at the other one. Saying, yes, yeah, he's weak in the faith. He has a Christmas tree. He's going to hell. See, like that. But well, see, he's a weak elder because he has a Christmas tree. See, that kind of nonsense? Get your ticket punched for hell because you're going. Why? Because a piece of tree with some tinsel on it, you're going to judge a lead in the church because he disagreed with you on a subject. And that's ridiculous teaching. But at the same time, you understand you may be causing others to stumble with the tree. So you got that. Maybe he don't go around telling everybody he got the tree. Maybe you found out, shouldn't have found out. The key is, is he's not worshiping the tree. He's not saying, oh, tiny bomb and all that to the tree. Oh, to the Christmas tree. He, he got the tree. See, because you're going to have to find some text in the Bible. When I say uh, they deck it with silver and gold. Here's the deck with silver and gold. But is he praying to see that deck, silver and gold tree in the Old Testament was a God and they worship. He, did you see him worship the tree? Did you see him, oh, Christmas tree of my heart? You hear him saying that? See, now you've judged him incorrectly. So I say, well, then, then I want one in my house if he got one. See, now, that's what we're going to get to the last verse in the text. You're doing it not by faith. Guess what? You're going to go to hell. See, because you're doing it because you saw him. You don't even believe you should. I still feel funny about it. Then don't do it. Fully persuading his own mind. What is the, what is the lesson about <clears throat> whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Your faith is in the elder. And not in Christ. Your faith in Christ propels your heart to believe. I don't want to miss that tree. I don't want to cause many people to stumble. People are going to ask me questions. I don't want to deal with it. But you saw the elder with it. I ain't going to just keep being up elder. The evangelist with it. Bible teacher with it. The faithful sister who taught you so much about Jesus as y'all had conversation. You saw her with it. And you want one. Your faith is in her now, not in Christ. Because you still struggling with, man, you know, I just don't know. See, the idea is not that because you saw them, you can't do it. It's because when you saw them, you didn't go into your heart and the text and study to see why you can do it. You just did it because you saw them. That's what's wrong with it. Your mind is not fully persuaded. It's doing it because of Now, the danger is that becomes your Christ. Because when they get stuck on something about marriage, stuck on something about raising children, stuck on something about uh, what we should do when we gather, you're going to follow them. You're going to follow, or you're going to start your own thing of having others follow you. That's why whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And it just doesn't mean that you believe you can do it. You must believe that God will allow you and it is okay and you're doing it right. All three must be considered, saints. Anybody have any questions or thoughts so far? Sister Paul. I have a question, Okay. This this subject that you just got on mm -hmm. concerning it, it will come up again. It will come up during that time of the year yes. that this tree is put up. But I recall back in some years that we ourselves taught that it was wrong to have a tree. Have we cleared that? Because it is wrong because to have a tree for certain people, and that and that can never be clear. Because if I have a tree. And let's say the other family members in my house are stumbling at it. Thank you. It's a good question. Then I didn't have it to myself, did I? See, that's the danger. Having something to myself is simply understood. If I got a piece of chicken and I eat it, I don't give it to y'all. I have it to myself. You didn't know I had the chicken. See, the idea is that if I'm introducing it to the family, I'm going to have to make sure they understand do they agree? Do they want? Do they will they participate? Or I'm just saying this has been the tradition of our family for years. See, but we're not saved by the traditions of our fathers. Right. So the lesson is taught correct in that yes, you can cause some to stumble. Matter of fact, this thing is so deep of faith, you can cause someone to stumble by what you eat. We're gonna go to that because Sister Paul says, open up a beautiful can of worms that we want to get into and find out what's in the can because. That's what causes me to stumble. That's why this lesson, I love to talk about it because it helps me every time and it should help the rest of us. Sister Carl. 
you know, uh, looking at it, Galatians 5 and 14 oh, and Ga right. Galatians 5 and 15. Mm -hmm. It's when what God has allowed us to have liberty in mm -hmm. and we judge one another that they have sinned. That is when we are in error. And that's what you're bringing out. Because look what it says here in Galatians 5 and 14. Because to some it may be a sin. Mm -hmm. And if it bothers your conscience, don't put up the tree. Don't that's put up the tree. But if I put up the tree, don't tell me I'm going straight to hell. I'm not going to receive it. I'm not going to receive it. But yet, this is why I may not put up that tree. Because if that tree causes my brother or sister to stumble. You see, it's all about love. Because look what the scripture says here. It says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, mm -hmm. even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Yes. When you are telling one, the, the reason is because of the love that you have for Christ and the love that you have for your brother that you will not do it because you might cause them to stumble. Yes. But yet if they make a statement and say you going straight to hell because you got a treat. That is not true either. That's an error. And That's what right. you're doing, you're biting and devouring. You're nipping at one another. That's you right. going to hell because you got a tree going up. You going to hell because you say, I can't. You, you say, you're, you're biting and devouring one another. But look at what the true scripture is teaching on that subject. That's right. And it's because of love. Mm -hmm. That is what motivates us to do what we do is because of love. Because of Agape. Love. That's Agape right. means you can take and character assassinate me right. but I can still take and pray for you and love you Ooh, I can amen. still do that That's still right. speak and you know what I may win you over if, right. you, if you have an issue with me that's and that's right. what it's about so be very careful that we don't bite and devour one another. That's but right. understand there are Christians that are weak in the faith. That's and right. it will cause them to stumble. Sure so will. don't invite them over and you got the, you know, you got the tree and this yeah, and that. Because, because you, you know, even before I became a Christian and I had a tree in my home when the children were coming up and put the little Christmas. I wasn't worshiping no tree. That's I was right. just Amen. going along with what the custom of the land was. That's and right. even right. in, right. and even in, though I wasn't in the body, I know the truth of in the Bible, there's no December 25th that says Christ was born on December 25th. Exactly. But you know what? When I got in the church, that's when I really learned the emphasis is not on the birth, yeah. the emphasis is on the death yeah. yes. and the resurrection. Exactly. God be Say praised. God bless you. This is wonderful because you know what? You have a situation develop. If you, she might have a good point. If you have somebody going around, you know, you know, we going well, Bobby, we want you to come over because it's Jesus' birthday. Well, see, he's way out there in left field. He starts explaining what the Yule law means. Mean, he's starting to break. Boy, he, see, he, he isn't handling it right because the text is going to say he has to offer it to the Lord. You're not going to be able to offer that to the Lord. You're not going to be able to offer that to the Lord. See, the what can be offered to the Lord is a prayer of thanks on any occasion. An appreciation for Jesus Christ being in the world dying for us and resurrected see you're not going to find a law against that and and that's where it has to be taught a lot of times you run across especially the jehovah's witness and even some unruly saints that uh uh break away and rebel without a cause from the church and they want to start saying why well, you said a hey, christian get not excited and you know and and this the idea is that we've had people call us on radio yeah all kind of questions come uh privately on the telephone different things but the key is is that i don't have any problem defending my brethren that do that none because i understand romans 14 and as we i've said even on radio program publicly first god and i said well i'll tell you like this my brother that's got a trio will make it to heaven if it has it right but you without a tree you not because you're not in the church right on the radio with no problem let it go all the way to the ukraine is fine because see i know the text and i understand he's in the faith and you are not that individual that called the question supposing a challenger you can't challenge truth brother don't understand that you can't challenge truth there's no doctrine there's no wisdom there's no understanding there's no knowledge that can go up against the Lord. It's a waste of time trying to bring up some thought against what the Lord has already said. Because he is the master who makes us fall. But if he's not your master, it don't matter what you got up in your heart. You're not making it down. 
And a, another thing I wanted to add too, you know we are all growing, continuously growing. Yes. And God, from his word, nudges us out of our comfort zone to go on and grow even more so. Yes. There are things we may have taught mm -hmm. or may have been preached, mm -hmm. but when we learn better, yes. we teach better, yes. and we do better. Exactly. You talk it and you walk it. That's you right. talk it and you walk it. Right. Because, you know, I just think personally for myself, having been brought up in the church, well, not brought up in the church, what I'm being, when I was added to the body, mm -hmm. because I, I would, when I was younger, I was Baptist. But what I wanted to say was this. It was always God is love, God is love. Yes. But when I came to Wilson Road mm -hmm. and I heard the other side mm -hmm. of love, mm -hmm. God is wrath too. Yes. If you don't do what he say. Amen. And that's Amen. love too. That is love. That's exactly See, right. life is about balance. That's it's exactly about right. balance. That's right. Well said, sister. And you know, and that's a good point, because if you don't have balance, I don't know about you, but if you've ever uh, tried to ride a bike and you had a bunch of stuff on one side, I don't care how good you were riding it, you coming down. I'm falling on it. Too much weight on one side, you gotta, it's got to be a balance. If you're walking, if you lose your balance, you're coming down. Because you have to be balanced, and we don't want that to happen to any saint. Here's a text that deals with the very technical side of this subject, and it gets so deep, you got some saints that would like to rip this page, but I'm fixing to read you out of the Bible when I get to reading this. Go ahead, sister. No, I just want to add this scripture to okay. the, the, the conversation we were just having, and that's 1 Peter 3.15. All right. When it says, but sanctify the Lord God in your heart, yes. and be ready always mm -hmm. to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope mm -hmm. that is in you. With meekness and in fear, yes. and and that main the main point of it is given being ready to give an answer to the hope. Mm -hmm. See, you're hoping that heaven is going to be your home, That's right. and you're going to live and abide in God's law as close as you can in your own conviction That's right. to do His will. That's right. And uh, whether it be that. We, we, we was talking about the tree of course but whether it be the tree or whether it be the, the drink or whether it be the meat whatever the case may be you stand fast to your hope and when, when that question is given to you about the tree the meat or the drink or whatever the case may be you be ready to give the answer as to why you have that hope in your heart and, and, and you move forward because you can't do anything about what another brother believes or another sister believes. But you got to stand firm to what you believe. And if you believe that Christ did die for your sin and Christ washed away your sin and you were baptized fully believing that Christ is going to come back for you, you got to stand for that. And your hope is all that you have here on this earth at this time that we're here. Is that hope that you're going to make. Because you're going you're gonna to bump heads with a whole bunch of folks. In the church and out of the church. About what you believe. And how it should be a little bit bent. To, 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 to fit in that corner that it don't fit in. You just have to stand fast to what you believe. And your hope is what you're hoping for. And that's Christ. To meet him. To see him. And, and that's what it's all boiled down to on the tree, the drink, the meat. Whatever the case may be. Your hope. Be ready to give that answer to that brother, sister, say, uh, our wayward, whoever. Be ready to give that answer in fear and reverence to God when you answer. That's right. Amen. Well said. Because, uh, you know, the Bible talks about it. Thank you. Well said. There's a, a lot of things we have to understand. Some things you get involved with may be a little too heavy for you to run a good race. You're constantly explaining why you're doing it. You're constantly defending it. After a while, you just kind of get tired of it. Say, man, let's, let's move. This, this is too much energy into this. But some people don't mind the energy that's into it. But the idea is this is what Romans is dealing with. Don't judge the person. And when you start teaching false doctrine, I don't care if you hate trees all together and any day other than Sunday. It don't matter. You teach false doctrine, the Lord is going to take you down and the saints are going to assist 
in the process because that cannot be done. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 8, if you will, and we're going to see there's a mindset that exists on the earth that we have to always be mindful of. It's sort of like have you, if when you're teaching children, uh, they'll hold the door for mama. Little boys love doing it. Little girls, but the little boys love doing it because they, they see, hopefully they've seen daddy doing it. They hold it for mama, you know. Hold the, but when they're letting it go, you say, look behind you, baby. Make sure nobody come behind. You don't want to slam their face. Oh, okay. You got to look. Oh, and you hold it. See, be mindful of what's going on around. Some people just walk through the door and boy, to bounce back and almost knock you down. They didn't mean it, but they're not mindful of what's going on. And so Romans, I mean, forgive me, 1 Corinthians 8 and 1. Now, such and the things offered unto idols. So these will be things that are offered unto idols in a ritual. I give this. You go on sometime in some of the uh, restaurants that are associated with Japan. Vietnam, you'll see a big gold Buddha. They not moving. They don't care what you say. Fruit there and candles burning, incense, everything. Okay, so if you if you see arrangements like that, he said, okay, stuff offered up to idols like that. We know that we all have knowledge. I believe Sister Carl threw this out to us. Knowledge puffed up, but charity edified. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. Saints struggle. You know, we don't struggle with bringing no lamb in, worshiping on Saturday. Some of us, Lord help us. Uh, but saints struggle with love. It is a known fact in the scripture, saints struggle with love. From Jonah, Moses, you can look all the way you want. You can always bump into saints that struggle at some point with love. Because love requires sacrifice. It requires defending others who cannot defend themselves. It requires going get people back who don't even like you. Let alone the people you're trying to bring them back to. And it takes love. It takes being criticized, talked about. It, having your name up in lights in a negative way. But at the end, it'll be up in lights, spiritual lights. And Christ will be the light shining on. And you don't really care about that. But you don't want your name to be there alone. You want their name too. If you can get them to understand that, we can help them. And so what he says here is, um, verse 3, If any man love God, the same is known. So if you love God, then God knows. Now you just can't say I love God. That love has to be displayed in a balanced way. Verse 4. As concerned therefore the eating of those things that are offered and sacrificed unto idols. We know that our idol is nothing in the world. And that there is none other God but one. For though there be that are called gods. All the many gods. Vishnu, Buddha, whether in heaven or on earth. As there be gods many and lords many. Many rulers. Many rulers. But to us there is but one God. Now when verse 6 is read by the lost, the Muslims and the Buddhists, they go, yeah, see, that's what y'all believe. Now that, that, that isn't what unto, unto us mean. But unto us, verse 6 means we the same know it's just one God. And that's all we deal with. See, they look at that and say, well, that's just, see, it's saying right here, that's what y'all believe. No, it's saying that is what it is. But unto us, there is but one God, the Father. And we will not accept another. In essence is what the statement said. Of whom are all things. And we in him. One Lord Jesus Christ. By whom are all things. And we by him. Howbeit there is not in every man that knowledge. And that's what you're looking for. The person doesn't have that knowledge. So not to cause them to hurt themselves. For some with conscience of the idol. They know, they know who Krishna is. A lot of people don't realize that was a psalm. And you know, I didn't know it as a child. I used to sing. I didn't know it came out when I was young. But other people would sing, you know, I lay Christian, my sweet Lord. That, that's a vile song to a false God. People would just sing that. Well, I had Jesus in my heart. Yeah, but you can't sing that one because that one is not about Jesus. I lay Christian about the, another whole religious belief. It has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. But people would just be singing it, man. It just, I remember when I felt, I said, man, this is trash. I said, can't sing this trash. I did not know that. Even not being a Christian, I was like, man, this is a bunch of foolishness. And so the idea is that you can't just say and do everything you see. Because someone's watching this and your heart 
has to present itself to the Lord. So must I. For some with conscious of the idol until this all eat it as a thing often unto an eye. So they eat, they know, yeah, man, it's gonna give me power. The eating these eggs around Easter will make me very virile by the goddess. Well, Paulie, it's nothing but an egg, man. And their conscience being weak is defiled. So now their conscience is defiled because they believe it has some power. Okay, verse number eight. But me commended us not to God. So that's what we understand. For neither if we eat are we the better, neither if we eat not are we the worse. So you don't know, say, so, you know, man, I don't eat, I don't eat that hog, man. See, the Lord had proud of that hog. You don't know, you can let all the hogs stay for the rest of us, and you will not be commended. And we can eat all of the hog that we can grab, and we will not be commended. It's nothing but meat. He says, but take heed. Lest by any means, as what Sister Carl mentioned to us, this liberty of yours becomes a stumbling block to the man of wheat. Now you say, well, well, why would I take heed? Because if you cause him to stumble, that's weak. Well, you say, well, he should, he should be strong. No, the system isn't thwarted toward the weak. It's turned to the strong. That's right. When you're walking with a baby, you don't grab a baby by the arm and you just be, well, you ever see sometimes people walk with little baby legs be hidden and you hit his leg and he crying, he'll pop on the leg for crying. It'd be like, you know, he need to hurry up. No, you need to slow down, mom and dad, because you don't know what you're doing because that's not how you walk with a child. You take your time or pick them up and then you run if you have to. And be careful that you don't fall. We will look at you crazy. First thing I tell you, you shouldn't be running with a baby, honey, I'll tell you in a minute. Because you got to know how to handle that which is weak. So that which is weak, the strong are held accountable to be mindful of the weak. How would you like to be coming through the door? There's a lady on a walk, an old man on a walk. You, know, you, come, you hold up the door, you got, and you about to let it go. Hurry up, man. People look at you like, what well, that is this foolish person's problem? Hold a door and be respectful. If they take 20 minutes while just stand there, hey, well, I'm going to be late for what I'm going to, but God will bless me. Put a prop on it, but don't let it go and hit the walk and hit them because they're weak and the strong are held accountable to be mindful of the weak. And so he says, For if any man see thee which has knowledge, see, see that's people. I say, Here's what people are looking at us on. See that me in the idol's temple shall not because of him which is weak be emboldened to eat things which are offered to idols. See, his conscience has not gained strength to eat this thing off to eye. He knows it's to an idol because he sees you. This is what you have to watch. See, so this is why the lesson is taught from both angles. Yeah, you put the trip, do what you want, but remember, you got to be mindful who's watching. Now, let's say you got a child in the house. They don't know nothing about it. Nothing about it. You say, well, I ain't telling them it's Jesus' birthday. Yeah, but you told them about the tradition. Now, they're going to have to do some explaining all the rest of their days that keep that tradition. So, you have to really do some heavy teaching on to break it down and let them know what to do. And see, you might not want to do that, but then don't bring it in. But did you keep it to yourself? No. See, so you got to deal with that. So now, you got to ask for mercy and grace on that because I keep it to myself. People don't understand. You don't just get to do it. Dude, I don't want to do it. Wait a minute now. But that's a God that you're supposed to be a member of His house. That you have to be mindful of. Because some people, when they rise up, may say, well, you, you know, I, I hear what you're saying, but I like to worship God on Saturday. Y'all had trees and Easter eggs and then they start beating you up with that. Now you got to start explaining. We never told you the egg was make you strong in some type of deity belief. And see, some people might say, I don't want to have all that drama. So we not doing none of that. They have the house. But don't start pointing no fingers at the house that do. And don't start pointing no fingers at the house that don't. Because you're going to do some explaining. We're going to get to that part. You're going to do some explaining. Or the Lord going to have a problem. Because he says, since you want to get involved in this highly technical thing, then you better do some explaining to break it down. Because it's going to be questions. You can't stop them. And you can't go, why can't I just live my life? People always in my business. you displaying your business. You got lights all on your roof. Santa Claus at the top. See, now Santa Claus is going to bring you drum off the top. Because there's no such thing as that. See, and you call him saint, you're saying he's holy. See, you got all kinds of, you have to really look at that. Oh, we're going to have to keep Santa down, keep Santa off the picture. So you got to explain if you're going to do that. If, 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 if you are going to say, well, he's just like Barney, well, then you every time somebody say, well, you got the Santa Claus. Is he a saint? You got to, don't let me talk about, don't get mad at your neighbor. He always in my business. Couldn't have my yard when he cut it. Don't go there. If you don't want no drama, don't put nothing up. 
If you prepare for battle to explain yourself, then be prepared because the questions are not going to stop all your days. So those are the options that are available. But remember, if people start stumbling, the Lord says, I'm going to talk to you about it. And so we have to understand, and he says um, here, uh, verse number 10, he's, he, we solidified, he's emboldened, he is basically taught, encouraged, and approved of by your action. Verse 11, and through thy knowledge, through thy knowledge, and what knowledge would that be? Through thy knowledge, that I can do this, and I have liberty, you starting some drama in his life though. He says, the weak brother perish. For whom Christ died. Notice the key word, brother. See, we're switching good now. He hitting brother. And that's the brother in the Lord. Mm, got trouble now. See, Jesus don't like when you cause nobody to stumble. But when you step on the brethren's toes, it's trouble. It's trouble. So he says here uh, that, verse 12, but when you sin, oh, nah. That's why when Sister Paul brought that up, I told you we were going to read a scripture. That said it is a sin to cause your brother to stumble by observing even a day you have a liberty to. If you cause him to stumble, Christ gives you credit and puts it into your account like you drop money in a person's account that you cause this one to stumble. That's why it's that. So it's kind of a risky thing you're dealing with. You got to be careful with it. And so he says clearly, when you sow sin against the brethren, we wound their weak conscience. You sin against Christ. Now we got we got drama. We got drama in our life now. Because you know Jesus loves us. And he coming to us to deal with us on it. Because he wants to rescue. Go ahead, sister. And you, uh, I just wanted to say, uh, I was waiting for you to get to that scripture. Mm -hmm. You know what is so sad? And I have seen this in the Lord's church. And especially when I was young in the faith. Mm -hmm. Is a Christian, uh, a, a non-believer become a Christian. Mm -hmm. And there's a Christian that has been going to that congregation all along. Mm -hmm. They go to that new birth, that baby who's in the faith, but new to it. Mm -hmm. And they run down the preacher. Mm -hmm. They run down the elder. They run down various members in the congregation. But here's the, here's the kicker. That particular Christian ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. But it's done run down everywhere. Everybody that they can run down and to this new babe in Christ yes. and it calls this person to take and become weak yes. because to this to the person who was doing it to them they looked up to them yes. see that's another thing to even coming in it has to be untaught you have to be I'll never forget when I came into the body for three years and I think I've told this before I was quiet mm -hmm. they called me smiling sister Carl because it was too thick I was gonna smile and I was gonna speak mm -hmm. but I had to unlearn and I knew that but everyone may not understand how the mm -hmm. process goes you have to be because when especially if you coming from a, uh, a denomination like a Baptist denomination That's because right. it's so strong and what but the bottom line is it caused some Christians to leave mm. to leave the faith because yeah. what they did and they themselves that did it mm -hmm. still that no, and that's very powerful what you said so because you they should know amen you know you don't walk up and give a baby a steak you know you know like, you know, you know little old baby you know toddly you know push out his mouth you baby you know you got one two that body came out you know, you try to say, you can't eat no steak. You can't give him that tough meat, you know? Even if you chew it, it eat some of them steak and hell, man. You're going to grind all you want to chew to this. It's still, it's high, 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 high coughing and all that stuff. Hold on, he's not ready. But they, they're not ready for that. They're not ready for that. And so we have to understand a good point, Sister Carl. God bless you for bringing that up. Because that saint that's been in the church a long time should uh, have the wisdom and understanding to know that's right. don't do that. And that's why you have to keep teaching because you got some old babies in the church. Got some old babies in the church. You know what I'm saying? And that's the way it is. And we're going to keep loving them too and teaching too. And so we see here in verse uh, number uh, 13. Wherefore, if me make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standing, lest I make my brother to offend. And so that's me. That's something that keeps us alive. Certain proteins in meat that's better for you than you can eat a lot of vegetables. But there, the vegans will get all excited. But there are certain things in meat that can be very beneficial to your life. And there is no curse placed on meat by God. 
And so we have to understand Jesus ate meat. So we understand that. And and we, we embrace that and we love the Lord for having taught us these things. Now, but that it gets a little deeper. You can look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. It's really going to get heavy now. Uh, he says in verse 23, All things are lawful for me. That's a powerful statement. All things. You think about that. A person can walk around naked in the proper environment. It's lawful in the proper environment. See, he's going to break down all the different things. But he says all things. There is a time that something has to happen. And there is a time when it cannot because of expediency, the need to build up the soul. So he says, but all things are not expedient. They will not be beneficial to the soul. All things are lawful for me. He says, now he says, they are lawful for me a second time, but all things edify not. So two areas. Is this thing going to help me? Expedient means to help me along my way. If, if I'm trying to go somewhere and I got a flat, you ever fix my flat? You've helped me on my journey. If I needed to go and buy some shoes because one got a hole, you give me the money and then give me a ride. You've helped me on my journey. Now, if I'm struggling with something spiritually, I'm trying to grow and develop, as Sister Claus said, that individual that came and did that stifled their journey, held them up, broke their car down, and bust the windshield because they stuck now. So the second thing is, will it edify? What is the difference? Well, to help me along my way, uh, my soul is fine. I need you to help me along my way. To edify, though, is to build me up. I'm broken down. So is this thing we're going to participate in, will it put me back together? Will it build me up? And so uh, if I've got a good foundation, can I put those walls that you're talking about, that thing you're doing, and cause me to be a nice, well-sealed home with no leaky roof. Verse 24, let no man seek his own, but every man's another man's wealth. See, if I'm with the Lord, I want to seek what's best for that person. Verse 25, whatsoever is sold in a shambles, that will be the meat market. You can look it up, that eat. Asking no questions for conscience sake. So Paul say, you, you go on places, you got some saints with you. One of them may be a babe, it don't matter. One may be a staunch elder in the church, okay? You go somewhere, you just see the meat market, you see meat arranged some way, don't ask why is it lined up. Don't ask why the sausages are all lined up, look like their eyes. Give me two of the red So Don't ask nothing. Because when you ask, why does it look like eyes? It is the all-seeing God. Okay, we can't eat that. Give me that, and I don't want to know nothing about this. Give me that. That's what he's saying. Because you start asking questions, man. You know, it's going the, 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 the young babe looking crazy, the old saint looking crazy. Man, what's wrong with him? You know? And so therefore he says, why? He says, for the earth is the Lord's and the fools are earth. See, everything in it is nothing but me. If any of them that believe not. Now this is a non-believer or it could be a saint that no longer believes in Christianity. Bid you to a feast and you be disposed to go. They tell you uh, that we are having a party at the Catholic Church. We're going to eat food and, and, and you know you, you know you say, yeah, it's, I know, y'all still got the statue. Yeah, there's several statues of Mary there. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, you say, well, you know, I'm going to go. He says, what's all is said before you eat, asking no questions for conscience sake. So if you go to, you say, you know, I've got a friend that's uh, from Japan, you know. Can you go in to his feast? Buddha there, red candles, burning fruit, incense, all kind of stuff going on. Fruit arranged a certain way. You're like, man, you know, you see a guy saying, why are you changing it up? What's wrong? No, you know, you know, there's something spiritual there in their mind. He said, don't ask no questions. Eat. And they, they, they go get the bowl off of Buddha's belly and bring to you. Don't ask why I was on the belly. Eat the apple and be quiet. Because when you start asking... He's going to start breaking it down. And then you're going to have to say, I don't want that. Give me something else. Because his conscience is watching you. Knows you're a believer. See, because he knows what you still stand for. So he says, but if any man say unto you, this is offered in sacrifice unto idols. He might just pop it out. Eat not for his sake that showed it. 
He says, And for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Conscience, I say, not thine own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? Paul said, it, 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 sometimes it might just blurt it out. It might just blurt it out. Hey, you know, this is from, from the God of Starty. If you eat this, they say that at night you can hear her voice. Say, thank you, I don't want that. Can you give me a bowl of that over there? I don't want it that way. I don't want that. No, that's it. That's why I said. See, this thing get deep. Because the Lord no man ain't no such thing as no Astarte. Go on, eat the grapes. But when the guy says it or the lady says it, you don't have to move. You know, there's a lot of saints that don't know, like, this is not even in the Bible. I gotta tell you before I read, I tell you they want to rip it out. It doesn't make the church hard, it doesn't make anything hard. It makes you holy and loving and kind and compassionate. How many times have you picked up something a baby dropped? You know, it was in my gun. Don't drop it no more, silly baby. The baby don't look at here and laugh like you playing. Pick it up, put that up. He said, okay, don't do that. Sit over here. Come over here. You know, that's how you do the same. Don't tell you, you know, that's how you do the cell. That don't, don't put that on. You know, we're not going to do that. That's okay. Be back like it's such a big thing. There are nurses who work with the elderly. It's very awkward. We're almost done. It's very awkward to work with a person older than you that you love. Maybe a relative of yours that you love dearly. And they don't know why you're doing what they're doing. Don't, don't do that. Don't give me that. You, you can't go, shut up, mama. No, hold on now. That's still mama. And many of you know exactly what I'm talking about. You just, you're gentle. You're kind to them. And they may say, you get out of here. I don't even know who you are. You know? Just kind of let them calm down. The nurse may have to come in that they do know. Because their mind is maybe in and out. You don't go, I hate you. You're so stupid. Do the saint like that. Amen. They don't remember you right now in what you're saying. This other person say, but I baptize. That's all right. Let this other person come on in and tell them a little something too and work with them. We can do it with our physical love. Why can't we do it with our spiritual love? One? It should be the same. Matter of fact, we should want to do it more with the spiritual because we're going to see them forever. We're going to see them forever. And so we have to understand that their mind is working fine. Their spirit is a little weak and feeble. So as we wrap up here, uh, we'll have a part two if God let us live. Uh, it says here in um, verse uh, number 30, For if I by grace be a partaker, because grace has been given, I can eat it, because it don't mean nothing to the Lord. Why am I evil spoken of for that which I give thanks? He gave thanks. Remember what the key of Romans 14 Give thanks. He gave thanks to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the eggs with the little dots on them. They tasted this. But they strengthened me to do your will. Amen. <laughs> I care what the dots mean. It's nothing but an egg. But the idea is, he's saying, then if I gave thanks, why am I spoken of? Wherefore, thou, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give none offense. Neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles. And all to the church of God. Now look at the three areas. The Jew. He's definitely not a Christian. Because he, he wouldn't be called a Jew if he was a Christian. Amen. The church of God is the only part in here that's the Christian. The second one is a Gentile. He's not a Jew. He's not a Christian. He might be a Baptist, a Methodist, a Muslim, or a Buddhist. He says, don't offend them either. He says, and definitely not to the church of God. Well, I read a whole section on that in chapter 8. He says, even as I please all men in all things... Not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Some people just can't stand to let an idea or a feast day go. I've been doing this since I was three and I'm 57. I don't care what this. Think about the other person's profit. Think about what it's going to do to them. Think about the other family. Think about the new saint that's 19 years old and walking in Christ. That's going to throw them off. What's going to happen? Do we have to do it? Are you willing to do all the explaining that goes with it, the detailed questioning that comes? Why can't we just eat this? Because it's disturbing their country and they want to know why they, and you don't want to talk about it no more. I'm the head of this. Relax. 
If you don't do it, you don't have to worry about it. But if you do it, be ready to explain. Because you're going to be held accountable. And if we believe that and understand that, we can serve one another and love each other in faith. Now, well, stop here if you're here you're not a member of the Lord's church. Don't you want to be, after hearing this explanation, a member of a church where God has said, I will receive you if you accept that my son is your only hope for salvation. Here are the steps. One. Jesus died, he was buried on the third day, he rose again. First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. No argument there. You, if, if you have any problem with those three statements, then don't even worry about Christianity. Don't waste your time getting wet and dried off. You will get nothing from the Lord. Jesus said, Mark 16 and 16, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. He said, I'm going to curse you if you don't believe. So Acts 2, 37, they asked Peter a very simple question. Men and brethren, what shall we do? He and 11 hour teaching. Peter didn't break stride. Change and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, which is to come out with his character and his authority to baptize, to teach about the law, to support the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so he accepts that. He says, for remission of sins, and you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Why? The promises of you, your children, and all that are fall, even in the midst of the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words that he testified and encouraged them, saying, Save yourself from this unto all that's perverted generation. Then they glad to receive his word. They were baptized the same day. 3,000 souls added unto them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, the breaking of bread, and in prayers. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. The scripture in Acts 2 47 is clear. The fellowship is so critical as we're spiritually together walking in the light of Christ. If you believe that, then in Acts chapter 8 it will be clear why the unit could not be baptized until Phil gave him the final instruction. See here's water. What the hell me to be baptized? He said, if you believe with all your heart. Philip is a shining example to the rest of us on how we should stand on Jesus Christ. Amen. Be faithful. There he is in the desert. Oh, it would have been so easy. Just go and hurry and baptize. Let's get out there. See, I want to get in the water too. Oh, it would have been so easy. You know, I'm so tired every time. Look, the Holy Spirit dragging me somewhere else and dragging me. But he is so reliable, so trustworthy by God. He gives instruction in the heat and bleeding sun to tell this man, no, you got to do it right. Because he thinks about his prophet and not. Philip's prophet. And so he says, I believe Jesus Christ, Son of God, and he baptizes and he rejoices. Paul says the Holy Ghost does the work. So if Philip's hope is in the conversation that the confession is right, his hope is the Holy Spirit receiving. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. That's the church, Colossians 1 18. Well, the Jew, the Gentile, bond, the free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Scriptures are clear. You know what I love about that verse? If you're in jail and man has given up on you, God has. Amen. See, God is in a garbage business. I was in a garbage can. So was. So all of us. You and me too. God is a junk man. And when he come out, you shining like gold and diamonds. He never come out with nobody halfway fixed. Always right. If they want to be. And that's why we receive everybody that has accepted that Jesus Christ is the only hope and been baptized into the faith. Do you believe that? Peter says it saves. 1 Peter 3, 21 and 22, the life figure. But even baptism now saves us. Don't worry about thief on the cross. Now saves us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. It is the answer of a good conscience to our God. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ who's gone in heaven, angels, authorities, and powers are subject to him. If you believe that, then the Lord God Almighty will rescue you right now if you want to get baptized. Are you listening to this information? We will find someone. We don't hope. We know. Because God is sovereign. He will have someone that you didn't even know right down the street from you ready to baptize your soul. And then now you got at least you and them that can worship together. If you believe that and understand it and embrace it in your heart. Revelation 2 and 10 is so clear. The Lord says, Behold, the devil shall cast on you in a prison. Behold, look, listen, he said. Listen to me. The devil shall cast on you in prison. Be faithful unto death, because he's going to try it ten days, and you receive everlasting life. You know what? Jesus never told a lie, and he's not going to stop. And if Jesus said he's going to receive us, just be faithful unto death, that's what we need to do. Don't worry about the temptation, don't worry about the trial, don't worry about the pain, because the law will lift you up. If you believe that you can be baptized now, if you need to ask for prayer, you can do that also right now while together we stand and sing Heaven's Invitation. And tenderly Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me.